Hello, welcome to Miniature Realms. My name's Stuart, and we have a roadmap for Warhammer the Old World. Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Baron of Dice, premium wargaming dice. Over 500 styles, over 4,000 customer reviews. Welcome to the best dice on the planet. So it's early in the morning with a coffee after the night before. If you are in Europe and you didn't stay up late overnight to watch all the news from, from Nova Open. And I'm kind of glad I didn't, not because I'm super disappointed in the news at all, just because there wasn't an awful lot of news and it would have felt like uh, a heavy trade-off for a night's sleep. Um, but I woke up first thing this morning, had my alarm set fairly early just to check what the news was, and we were pretty clear before we went into this. They said it was a roadmap and nothing else really. It was quite clearly laid out on the imagery and the advertising for the event, and it was very much going to be about the Age of Sigma Stormcast announcement, really. So I'm not disappointed with that at all, um, and that was one of the reasons that led me to stay in bed last night rather than to stay up late and, and see what was on the roadmap itself. But I thought it would be fun just to talk very briefly, and this is very much a bonus video, but talk very briefly around my thoughts on the roadmap. And I wouldn't normally make a full video about something so small, so little news, but the reason I'm doing it is I've very recently done videos talking about the state of the game after six months and where it might go, etc. And I'll pop links to those now. And I think this kind of rounds that discussion off, maybe for the year, looking at the way things are, but at least for now, it kind of rounds that discussion off. And I'm really interested in what you guys think after the roadmap. I'm sure there will be some frustration. I'm sure there'll be people that are super happy as well. There's always different ends of that scale, but very short video basically discussing my thoughts on it and, and where that leaves us now. So excuse me while I sip away with my morning coffee and if I look a little bit bleary, I just it's because I am. Um, so the headlines, the headline news is, there really isn't that much news. Um, the headline is no more armies until next year, 2025. That's the takeaway. Um, and if I was told that um, yesterday, before I went to bed, that that was going to be the headline news, I'd have been very disappointed. And maybe for a few moments when I woke up this morning, uh, that's how I felt as well. I was really hoping that having seen momentum pick up with the release of the dwarves and then their second wave following so quickly afterwards, and then all the terrain being released, which is actually out this, this weekend, um, and then so soon after the terrain being announced, we have the Warriors of Chaos being teased. And then the pre-order date has gone up and that is pre-ordering at the time of recording this, pre-ordering this Saturday as well. So it felt like we really picked up some momentum. It uh, feels a little bit like, oh, okay, so a really long wait again, or a potentially really long wait again for the next big news for, for Warhammer the Old World. And I think that's a little bit disappointing. Um, this sort of feast or famine stuff is, is a little bit frustrating, I suppose, at times. But then the other side of my brain and the, the, the non-emotional side of my brain says that, just like I have in my other videos while I'm discussing this, is that this is a specialist design studio product. This isn't main studio. You're going to go long periods without releases. Once all the factions are out, that will very much be the case, I am sure. So we need to be mindful of that and just be grateful in some ways that we've got Warriors of Chaos so quickly. So I do wonder if Warriors of Chaos weren't out till October, would have been happy to have the Dwarves and excited about Warriors of Chaos. And then next year wouldn't seem quite so far away with Christmas in between. But because we've had Warriors of Chaos announced so quickly, that's probably heightened the kind of, my, my from a personal point of view, my little bit of a disappointment that we haven't got another army coming in between. I was really hoping we were going to see something else in November time this year. And I think that's the, the main takeaway. So while I have you here, let's just delve into that roadmap in a little bit more detail. When I say detail, there's not really a lot of detail on that. And this isn't just the, the old world roadmap. If you look at all the roadmaps, they're fairly sparse. They're not quite in the same level of detail with roadmaps we've had in the past, which shown almost a whole year by quarter breaking things down. 
I can understand that. We know that um, they've had some delays and things. There's been plenty of news about that this year. We know that they're struggling with production facilities and things. Um, so I'm not surprised that they don't want to lay all their cards out on the table and commit to things that may they might not be able to, able to deliver at the end of the day. And, and that's I appreciate that. I think that's actually smart. Uh, one of the companies I used to work for in the past, um, one of their five commandments um, was, was not about not over promising. Um, so I think that's a really important and, and smart thing to do. But still. Um, we're talking about one image here as the roadmap for the old world and it's got so far very little just said it's launched and then still to come so I'm reading from my phone here but still to come Dwarf and Mountain Holes I mean when was this made could this not be edited for this <laughs> it seems a little bit of, of a, a bit of a drop ball it is minor it means nothing at all but in terms of a, a big professional company still to come Dwarf well no they've, they've, they've been and gone and we might have the old miniature but we've had two waves of them and Warriors of Chaos have been announced and the pre-order goes up so it feels like they're, uh, this should have been delivered, this news should have been delivered a little while ago or at least a couple of weeks ago but it, again by the by to be honest with you it doesn't make a huge difference and then the big news obviously is 2025 which is Empire and then the High Elves, um, I had some rumours, I had a bit of a th theory about high, high Elves. Um, lots of people thought they were next and I did wonder whether Empire would be next because it was so linked to the core of the old world. Everything revolves around it and it's the whole setting really, it's the heart of the setting and also chaos marauding down from the north. Empire feels more like I know lots of people have been following the shields on the front of the, um, the rule book and matching them off and it seems to have worked so far but I'm not surprised it's Empire. In one sense, you you go with elves because you've already got a human faction. But in terms of the grander story, I think Empire absolutely makes sense. I'm pleased because Empire is my other big thing other than Dwarves. So that's a, a, a mark for the future for the channel. I will be doing lots of Empire-based stuff. I, I probably won't be waiting to 2025. I'll be looking at doing things before that as well. So at least that will be fun. But it does feel a little bit light. Uh, as I said, um, and my major disappointment is we haven't got one of those two factions this year. Why is that? I'm guessing, again, the other things will naturally take priority. There's an announcement around Middle Earth Strategy Battle Games, so a lot of you watching this might not follow that game. I play it, I enjoy it, so I do. Um, there's a new edition on the way, and they clearly have a licensed deal with the new film that's out in December. It's a Peter Jackson production, he's not the director, um, and it's an anime film, uh, but it looks great. So it's all the writers from the original films, from the original trilogy and the Hobbit trilogy as well. All those writers and producers, a lot of that team behind it, um, but an anime film set um, in prehistory to the Lord of the Rings films, the, the, those of you who know about the story, or at least watched the films before that, um, set in Rohan. It looks really, really cool. Um, and they've got a new edition, and I'm I'm guessing big starter box with all these new licensed things. There's an article up today showing one of the first miniatures, um, which was shown in the recent film trailers and stuff. So that's quite big, and that's a December film, I believe. So I've got a feeling that we're going to see that as a big push towards the end of November. Maybe that box released in November all through December alongside all the other Christmas stuff they do, all of those big boxes and things. So that kind of cuts out November and, and December. So that really leaves us September we're just about to launch into, which will be a actual release date for Warriors of Chaos. So this really leaves October window. And then there's Mechanicum come, coming from SDS as well, coming from for, for the Horus Heresy. So that kind of fills up the month. So logically, I get why we've got a long gap now. Um, it's just a, a bit of a shame. I feel we've built up some momentum and it feels like there's going to be a gap. I really hope Empire is January now. I really hope Empire is January and High Elves are fair, but at least March. It's not kind of March for Empire because that will feel a long, long, long stretch. Christmas always speeds things up. People are busy, etc. But I do hope that there's something that's not on that roadmap in, in between. There's been the rumoured sort of match play guide book or something like that, which would be quite cool. Um, I really think it would help the game in certain senses. I think mine's on my shelf. Pause one moment while I grab it. I'm back and it was like I wasn't away. So this is a match play guide for Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game. It seemed to be out of date. Um, very thin book. It's about 
45 pages, so Arcane Journal sort of size book. And that had extra scenarios and double scenarios, all designed around match play and just some thoughts and some directions about how you might run events and, and things like that, as well as match play just between two people at a club or something like that. It's a really nice balancing thing. Um, there's rumours, there's been rumours about something like that for the old world. I first heard them on um, Square Based, I think, but they're doing the, doing the rounds. Uh, maybe there'll be something like that in between, which would be really, really cool. In many ways, I feel you want to have all the factions out before you do that. Because um, I'd hope that they would build into this some minor adjustments and fixes that may be needed for match play. It's not needed for sort of open play or for narrative play, but some of the excesses you can actually trim. Um, you can do a kind of a, a subtle FAQ or rules change, because what happens is people follow what's in this, um, for their club play and then that kind of trickles down and then anyone wants to play a narrative game or massive open play game it doesn't matter anyway because we're all make I play games like that we're all making up rules as we go on the fly um, but it's a really good way of kind of steering the community and you could you could say we recommend for match play games max 10 wide so you, you get rid of line hammer and maybe you can build in some scenarios and objectives in some things which promote the use of infantry which would be a really good way of bringing infantry back into the game something that maybe is missing at some competitive events i'm not going to events at the moment i'd like to but I'm much more of a casual player anyway. But because I said, because I see that trickle down into kind of club games, um, people tend to sort of follow comps, follow the rule of three, and all that kind of stuff gets embedded into the, the casual play game as well. I think with a good bit of direction to build like this. Anyway, that's, this has turned into a wish listing on what I might like to see in one of these books that may or may not ever exist for, for the old world. But hopefully one of those is on the way and we'll get a little bit of a news, even if it's just a tease or something. But overall, um, really happy that we know what the next two factions are. I wish they just named them all and put more on the roadmap, but I get why they don't want to go too much further. Slightly disappointed there isn't one more this year, and I'm worried about that momentum dropping, and I hope they do stuff other than just the Facebook team posting up images and saying, what are you working on? I hope they're able to do something, the odd article here and there, um, maybe the odd white dwarf, or just something just to keep the community from that big dip. We saw it with the gap and waiting for dwarves and that radio silence. At least we know now, so we're not waiting in unknowing anything. But I really hope that we see a, a little bit of something over the quiet months just to give people a boost, a little tease for a head or something like that. And that's it really, a bit of a ramble, but I thought I'd do it anyway. I thought I'd, I'd a bit more than I could fit in a, in a short, and I didn't want to wait till I like, sat down at a kind of podcast or did a live stream to do a chat thing. So I thought I'd have a ramble. I'm sure there'll be lots of angry people in the comments. I'm sure there'll be lots of happy people in the comments. And I do want to hear your thoughts. So please do put them in the comments. Um, because I'm really interested to kind of get an idea of at least the community that watches my videos where you sit and where you feel about the game and, and these announcements. Um, and, you know, there, is there other stuff from other game systems you're, you're happy about? These, I'll pop some images on the screen now, these might turn up in an old one army. I think these are really, really cool looking models. I'm sure that these will be converted for the legacy army that is Chaos Dwarves at the moment. These are stunning. Also from the same SDS side of the business and funnily enough the same team that works on Old World. Um, at least a couple of the people that are involved in the Old World are involved in this as well. So it's very, very cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you soon.